What was your take of the President's State of the Union address, and, and did you think that he was more conciliatory or took a harder stance when it came to the border wall? You know, it's funny, when you read the headlines in the morning, the day after, it's sort of like a Rorschach test in terms of what people take away from, from what was actually said. Well, I think the uh, president went to his core uh, principles, his core values of national security, uh, homeland security. In terms of the wall, uh, as chairman of the subcommittee of homeland security, I, uh, basically I thought he sort of stated the obvious that he has, he has been consistent in his beliefs, and that is that we need a, a, a comprehensive border security plan that includes a barrier and a wall. Uh, and I think there should have been no surprise of anybody in the audience that the president reinforced that. But I think it's important, at least from my standpoint, being on the conference committee, that the president sort of charged us, get together, compromise, uh, look for a, um, a, a bill that kind of meets all these standards. And so I think he threw it back in our court, which, quite frankly, I'm grateful to. And I think if those of us on the conference committee are optimistic that we can, re we can meet that challenge. So you really do feel charged with the ability now to find a compromise when it comes to this very uh, contentious issue of the border wall? Well, absolutely. And the people in the room are seasoned appropriators uh, like myself who, who do this every year. We, we try to strike a balance between our uh, different interests and our different uh, priorities, and, and, and we find something in the middle. And that's what we're going to, we're getting back to work at it early this morning. Senator Bai? Yeah, Shelley, uh, welcome. Hi. And I did notice that uh, my good friend and, I'm, and your colleague, uh, Joe Manchin, was standing and applauding last night uh, more than uh, many of the other Democrats. So if we could just have the West Virginians work this out, I, <laughs> I, would, I too would be optimistic. So we obviously all hope that uh, we can get a deal done here. Uh, the seeds of a deal should be there because there have been agreements on uh, this sort of thing in the past. Right. So why did the president uh, characterize the efforts of the committee as a waste of time last week? Why is he more pessimistic than you are? Well, you know, that was disheartening, yeah, quite, quite frankly, that the president kind of prejudged where we were going as, as a waste of time. I think as time has gone on, I think he's seen the commitment from both the Democrats and the Republicans on the committee in the public statements, but also the, the ability, he knows that we're negotiating back and forth. Nobody's shut down here, uh, to use that term. And, uh, and so we're working together. And I think hopefully he'll sort of adopt the stance that he did last night. This is now in your court. Uh, members of Congress uh, come up with a compromise. Uh, hopefully they'll stay off Twitter because uh, things right. seem to be going well and then something aggravates them and a tweet comes over the transom and uh, it makes it more difficult. Well, well good luck to you. Thanks, I hope that Evan. he will leave it to the conference committee and uh, hopefully we get a deal done. Well, I think, Senator, you, you, bring up a, uh, by, you bring up a great point here, which is that we, had the, we have the teleprompter Trump, as we might say, Right in conciliatory tone, and then we're just kind of waiting for that next tweet. Like in the next, like now. Like perhaps at any moment, we're sort <laughs> right. of on, on, on tenterhooks here waiting for that. Do you think there's anybody, and it's a serious point, do you think there's anybody that can get to him and say, listen, you've come off this speech, there were some great moments, all right? We had some applause on both sides. We had some cheers. The moment where he talked about the number of women legislators, everyone stood up, chants of USA. How can you get to him and say, you have goodwill? Don't blow it. Well, that's oh, an excellent. Uh, I'll, I'll, go yeah. I'll go to buy, and then, uh, Senator, I want to okay. hear from you as well. Sure, Great, Charlie. Uh, well, look, uh, there have been people around him a long time, including his own family members, who've been urging him to stick to the script and try and be a little more uh, on message. And it just doesn't work. This president just doesn't seem to function that way. I suspect we won't see any tweets today because the response to the speech was pretty good. He's probably feeling you know, pretty happy about things. I would look to Friday morning before Michael Cohen's testimony in the House. He may be a little more aggravated then, Brian. So I just, it's just part of his DNA. He just doesn't seem to be able to help himself. Well, and, you know, the way I look at it, too, uh, you know, I always try to spin something positively because I'm an optimistic person and positive person. We know how the president feels. Uh, he's pretty honest in these tweets. And while they aggravate and, and we're all on pins and needles sometimes here on Capitol Hill to see is, is there something coming up next unexpected. At the same time, I think uh, we know where he stands. So in terms of the committee, I really think the best thing that the president can do is let us work our will. And so I'm hoping he stays silent on that, at least for the next several days. Senator Capitol, you sound pretty optimistic about the makings of some kind of a deal with this committee. You say you're going back and forth with offers. Is it basically just trading numbers right now? I mean, can characterize 
I guess, the nature of these negotiations and, uh, and maybe your confidence level that something comes out of it? Well, I think, you know, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic, but I'm also realistic and realize that this could be very difficult. Neither the speaker nor the president has given uh, a number certain uh, that if it goes over or under, it's a no deal. I think that is good. And I was glad the president didn't get into specifics last night. Uh, but there's obviously a, str a strong disagreement there. Let's let's try. You know, I'm, I'm speaking with my Democrat counterparts in the House and the Senate. Um, I think we. You know, after the shutdown, I think we all sort of feel like here in Congress that we need to prove the American people that we can do what they sent us here to do, which is to read it, uh, reach a compromise. Uh, Senator Bai did it all the time in his service here. We should be able to get there, and we're familiar with the people on the committee. What's, what's the probability, Senator Capito, of another shutdown in 10 days? I mean, you're an optimistic person, but you did say that you're cautiously optimistic on how things are going in the committee level. Well, I think uh, I don't think we'll have another shutdown. You don't. I, okay. I, I think it was uh, a, a misery path and uh, the most misery path. So I don't I don't feel we'll go in that direction. I think the bigger question will be if we reach a compromise, uh, what how the president interprets that compromise. Senator Capito, I want to uh, just quickly turn it a little bit here because the president did sure. mention opioids once in the speech last night. I know you're from Glendale, West Virginia, up there I against the, the Ohio River Valley. 47,000 Americans died last year from an opioid death, whether it's a prescription drug or heroin. It's decimating places in your state, in West right. Virginia, in my home state of Virginia as well. The president mentioned it, but I do wonder, what can we realistic do? I mean, we can, we can throw money at the problem, but is there a solution on the pharmaceutical side, a hard one, that may cost companies money to solve this national crisis? Well, you've seen a lot of, you've seen us here in Congress address this issue through the Support Act and CARA and uh, 21st Century Cures. But one thing that states are doing as well is to tighten up the ability to get long-term prescriptions for pain, to um, make sure that the accountability is there for the prescriptions. But what you've seen is people moving then to heroin because they're addicted. And then now, even, even not even worse, but more troubling is uh, methamphetamine and crystal, crystal methamphetamine killing people that's, uh, if it's laced with uh, fentanyl. So one of the things that we can do uh, to that is to stop the flow of the drug because we know it's coming up uh, through our ports of entry on the southern border. Getting back to border security, the president made the point that if we have the enhanced um, inspection materials at the point of entry, we can disrupt the flow of fentanyl like we did in Arizona just last week. Uh, so it's all tied together, but we, it needs to be recovery, treatment, drug courts, uh, education, uh, transition into, into jobs. It's such a huge problem that there's not one thing that's going to solve this. And we have to also, I think, pattern our responses after what's working, like a Lily's Place in West Virginia that works with um, drug-exposed uh, uh, babies at birth. So there's lots of good things going on. But uh, for me in my life of public service, this is one of the saddest and most deeply troubling things I've ever had to figure, try to figure out what, what's going on here.